Today on Nugget Cast, congratulations. You've trained, you've studied hard, you just passed your CCNA. What are you gonna do now? I'm going to the Disneyland! No, well, okay, maybe that'd be fun. But what are you gonna do? Great job. Now you just need to get your CCNP security, CCNP data, CCNP voice, JNCIP, JNCIE, CCIE, CISSB, MCSE, MCSA, MTA, JNCIS, JNCIA. Welcome to Nugget Cast. I'm your host, Steve Barth, and today we're exploring life after CCNA. For those looking to just start out in the IT industry, a great place to begin is with earning your CCNA. And passing that test is exciting. You're officially on your way. You have credentials to get a great job now. You have arrived. But have you? One of the common questions we get here at CBT Nuggets is, I earned my CCNA. So now what? What are your next steps? What should you study? Which certifications do you start working on next? How do you properly balance your IT skills? Today, let's chat with trainer Keith Barker to find out how to handle life after CCNA. Keith Barker, welcome to NuggetCast. How you doing today? I'm great. Hey, thanks for having me. It's good to talk with you. Yeah, no problem. Now, Camp Conquer is done. We are back in the CBT Nuggets studio today to talk about life after CCNA. Woohoo! So, Favorite topic. You've just finished your exam. You're excited. You are ready to go. And you then get that sense of, now what? Okay. But here's, here's what I think about when uh, people tell me they've just completed their CCNA. It's, like, it's a lot like a, a child. I have several kids, and a lot of them are pretty good. And uh, when the kids get to be like 16, they're expecting to have things happen in their life like, oh, I'm going to drive, or I'm going to start dating more, whatever it might be for that person who's interested in that, whatever it is. And one of the realities that comes and slams them very, very quickly is the fact that just because they're 16, or in the case of getting a CCNA, just because they got their CCNA, the world doesn't start beating down a path to their door. And so I know it's not fun to hear, but I'd rather have you know our learners hear it from me rather than experience it. And that is the CCNA for route switch from a, an employer's perspective is a lot like uh, being able to fog a mirror. <laughs> Meaning you've got a pulse and you, you're alive, you have a basic knowledge, and that knowledge is important, but it's really just a starting point, a foundation to build on, and, and that's the point that I think a lot of people have to know. So here's the secret of that. If a person gets a CCNA, uh, and it's also true for a CCIE by the way, if a person gets a CCIE, that doesn't mean they've arrived. That means they have the opportunity now to start really hitting the ground running. And so anytime we get a certification, whether it's CCNA, CCP, CCA, whatever it is, well, you need these as an opportunity to launch, to start moving our feet and start to really learn about the technologies and really start to apply it. Because the, the mixture of the hands-on application of the technology and also having a cert along with that to help demonstrate that you've got minimum requirements, that's the magic. And one of the secrets of of hiring, for example, uh, talking, I listened to one of Jeremy's um, <laughs> nuggets recently, and he was telling me that uh, a CCIE was being tra uh, hired to deploy switches based on a template, which means you basically take a template, fill the numbers, and pl plug it in. And he asked him, why in the world are they paying a CCIE to go ahead and do basic work that could be done by a CCNA? And the answer was, if something doesn't go right, that's when you need the expertise of fixing whatever that problem is. It can be multiple different facets. So um, the opportunity of having a CCNA is really a starting point as we move forward. So what should people be focusing on then? 
Good question. Um, I would say that for anybody in networking at all, they need to get their CCNA. It's a good starting point. And then, then after the CCNA, I would then take a look at what are you doing with what are you doing in your work right now? For example, in your work environment, is there security related items that are interesting to you? Or is there more route switch or voice or data center or video, whatever it is. And then I would personally, I would take the opportunity to start focusing on that technology and becoming really, really good at it. I mean, think about it. You have this, if you're working in an environment where that technology exists, you have the opportunity to benefit yourself and your employer by going above and beyond doing a little bit more. In fact, what I recommend is, now this isn't going to be popular for some people, but I would recommend always doing more than what you're paid to do. <laughs> I learned that from my dad, like, you know, 40, 50 years, I'm 50. So over 40 years ago, I learned that from my dad. And that has always served me. Do more than what you're paid. So if there's a technology, hey, why not become the best at it? And the, the secret is read two or three books a year, continue practicing, and continue to get better and better and better with it. And, you'll, and if your company you're currently at, they'll appreciate the fact that you have those skills. So let's think of this like, like a pool. Do you want to go for like a really big pool as far as your skill set, but shallow? Or do you want to go small and really deep? Does that make sense? Steve, that does. That's a great question and a great way to think about it. Uh, I think if, let's imagine that you and I were going to be hired as uh, security consultants. Obviously, they're going to think or they're going to want the customer that hires us. They're going to want to have us have some really serious depth in security. However, at the same time, we also are going to have some exposure to networks, operating systems, virtualization, voice, video, all those other things that tie into the networks of, that we use today. So I would say that for somebody just starting out, they just got their CCNA, take what we love. And I would say start to go deep on that, but at the same time, I would also, I mean, personally, what I would do, if I was telling my, my replication of myself, I would say, Keith, get your CCNA, and then I would continue on with my CCNP, and then I'd say also, go ahead and get your CCNAs in other topics that are interesting to you, like data center, video, or voice. Um, I like service provider too. Service provider is interesting to me, so that's one that I would you know push myself to as well. I think where the the most happiness is and also a good amount of money is if somebody gets really good in one area, but they still have their periphery and knowledge on some of the others. But with so much stuff out there, what in the world do you become an expert in as opposed to all the auxiliary stuff? Uh, I guess the secret is to focus on what is currently at the company. If you have a job, to focus on the technology that's there because that will serve your company and it will serve you. And um, if you're interested in it, that's even better. Now, if you're at a job where it's not interesting to you, you can still become really good at it. <laughs> but, and here's the secret. If something is not interesting to you, um, I bet you there's ways of making it interesting. Yeah. And as the, the more we learn about technologies, the more interested we become in them anyway. Right. But is there a risk in becoming obsolete if you're focusing on the wrong thing? Uh, that's a good question. I think, I think the biggest risk for, for myself or anybody else is that we stop learning. We just say, I know everything I need. For example, SDN. Software defined networking is a big deal. And it's gonna be a bigger deal. Uh, VMware and virtualization, it's a big deal. So if, if a person said, well, I know what I know, and I, I think that knowing virtualization or I think that knowing SDN or whatever it is, the technology, I think that'd be helpful, but I'm gonna stop right here. That person, it's kind of go ahead. A person's gonna be hurting. So the key is. In fact, I have a friend who who uh, I said, "Hey, there's this technology X Y Z that I'm studying. It's exciting," and he goes, oh, "Yeah, I'm not gonna learn that. I'm I'm set." He called me a few days after on another conversation and said, "You know what? I changed my mind. I would like to know more about that." And I thought, that's the spirit. Always yeah. learning, always growing, because it's motivating too. I mean, think oh, yeah. about it. We're learning a new technology. It's like woohoo. Now, one of the things that I've always learned is that when you're learning something, if you get ready to share it with somebody else, that helps you learn better. What Absolutely. are your thoughts? I totally agree with that. Yep. Um, <laughs> as a trainer, I, I, I have the luxury of uh, talking with hundreds of thousands of students through our CBT Nuggets videos um, every time I teach. And so when I'm teaching it, I'm doing it as, as if 
if it, as if you were sitting right next to me and we're going through the content together. And by teaching, I, I learned. So I encourage everybody to, if you have a coworker or a spouse or somebody else who might benefit from that knowledge, share it, share it, teach, teach everything that you know, because it won't, I, I still, I still know that there's a few individuals on the planet who think, well, if I share what I know, I won't be quite as valuable to the company. Well, check this out. There was, there's no end of learning new, relevant, important things. So yeah, that's Steve. I think that's a great idea. Share what we know with others that increases our own understanding. And I've also had the opportunity uh, when I'm talking about something to realize myself that, you know what? I don't know that as good as I think I want to. And it gives me an opportunity to go back and revisit that topic and make sure that I really know it or dig in deeper again to learn the tech, the pieces that I, that I thought I knew that I didn't quite know well enough. I want to learn it to learn it, not just to know it. So any final thoughts for life after CCNI? <laughs> I would say that the first step is to move your feet. Not you, but a person for them to move their feet. So once you get the CCNA, think of that as the starting blocks in a race. You put your feet in, whatever those things are called. What do you starting know what blocks. Called? Starting blocks. Starting blocks. Hey, yeah. get your feet in. And I would think that the, the gun fire is the fact that you got your CCNA and now it's time to run. And if you can't run, fine, just walk. But continually move your feet in the direction of where you want to go and you'll get there. I'd also um, offer that if you're not sure, maybe you're not sure what you want to do, buy some people lunch. This is also some coaching I've used. For example, if you see a person at your organization, you're not sure all about what they do in IT, but they're in it and they look pretty happy about doing it, maybe offer to buy that person lunch and say, hey, I'm, I'm looking at, you know, trying to learn out what people do and ideas. Could I schedule and pay for a lunch and have lunch with you and just pick your brain for 45 minutes? And most people will be honored to say yes. Food always asked, works. So how'd you get into this business? Uh, what do you love about it? What you, any tips for me? And that's, that's right. If you want to find out how to get a good job in IT, talk to somebody who has a good job in IT and they'll tell you what happened to them and you can pattern that and you can follow those recommendations and have similar success if you're willing to put in the effort. And I, no matter what we do, whether we're uh, you know doing virtualization or data center or route switch or whatever it is, have fun. Enjoy the process. Enjoy the learning. Enjoy the doing. Just make sure that every day is, uh, is pleasant, at least, if not happy. Thanks, Keith. So there you have it. Some specific things to help you put together a training plan after you've earned your CCNA. So let's wrap it up for this month. Remember, you can always contact us with topics you'd like to see us cover in future episodes with this address right there. We'll see you next month, and remember to celebrate your successes, even if that means you are dancing down the street. I mean, you this is hard to do in front of you guys. <laughs> Jump out. This way. Jump out that way. Yes. Okay, I'm ready. This is the dance. Right there. Alright, so you don't want to... Good, go do that again. Again? <laughs> CCNP voice, CISSP, MCIE, MCCI. I got messed up again. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, so okay, you got it. There you go. let's, let's get her ready for the tick. <laughs> okay. Great job. Now you just need to get your CCNP security. Wait, stop. Oh. Yes! And go. Great job. Now you just need to get your CCNP security, CCNP data, CCNP voice, CCIE, MCSE, JNCIA, JNCNP. <laughs> Is that enough? <laughs> CCDA.